Look, it's Moraine Lake, Canada's best kept secret. I'm sure you've seen loads of pictures of this place on Instagram, a bit like this. Or even loads of slow motion footage, a bit like this. But in reality, you're not gonna get the lake to yourself. Car parking's almost impossible, and it gets busier and busier every single year. So the question is, in reality, is it still even worth all the effort to come and visit? It is currently 3.30 in the morning. I'm about to leave to go to Moraine Lake. It's about an hour from Banff, and I know I need to get there at least an hour before sunrise. And I suppose the point of today's video is in all honesty to see if it's even still worth the effort to visit. Year on year, it becomes busier and busier at Moraine Lake, and it becomes harder and harder to get there. So stick around if you want to see the best times to visit, the best ways to get there, and if the hype of Instagram does really live up to the effort that you have to make to get there. But first, let's grab some fuel and grab some caffeine. It is now 4.30 a.m. and I've just made it to the Lake Moraine car park. Sun's still not gonna come up for about another hour, but the car park is already three quarters full, I reckon. So probably in about the next hour or two, the road coming in will be completely closed to general traffic and you won't even be able to get a park in here. That's what you kind of have to do nowadays if you wanna be here for sunrise. You need to get here an hour or even more before the sun comes up to guarantee you can actually get in and get a park uh, for that. But let me show you how busy the car park is and how many cars are coming in. As you can see, the car park is getting pretty full already and it's still probably 45 minutes to half an hour to the sun coming up. Um, but it looks like it's gonna be a bit of a banger today. So we've got some clear skies uh, behind us here and we've got a good bit of clear sky actually just above the mountains just here as well so hopefully fingers crossed it's all going to be worth it you feel the chill of the cold mountain air against your skin you listen to the birds as they sing their dawn chorus the sun kisses the jagged peaks in front of you you soak in the wilderness as you skip cinematically across the lakefront the golden light reflects in the turquoise waters you can see it now that perfect picture. The likes rolling in. I am an adventurer. But all is not what it seems. Crowds, road closures, parking issues, traffic jams. This isn't the reality you signed up for. So it's about 6.30 now, the sun's come up and it's pretty busy over there on the rock pile. It's a bit of a weird one because you're not really meant to walk off of the viewpoints, but everybody does. Um, I've actually just walked down the far side of the lake here, uh, which is the good thing about this time of year because the lake's lower. You can actually walk all the way to the end, which I've actually never done before. So I just thought I'd have a bit of a stroll down here where it's a bit quieter. I'd imagine, in all honesty, the road is probably closed now and the car park's full. So if you didn't get in before kind of 5.30, 6, you're probably not going to get in for sunrise or maybe even at all. You have to just keep coming back and checking to see if that road's open. People always use the word touristy, or something's too touristy, so they're not gonna go. And that's a term that I hate in all honesty, because if something's touristy, it's because it's incredible. And I mean, like, look at this place, like, it's insane. And there's a reason why hundreds of people, or thousands and thousands of people wanna visit this place every single day. The accessibility is amazing. If you can get into the car park, it's only a small walk from the car park to the rock pile where the viewpoint is. So it's definitely still worth a visit. You just really need to know when to go and how to get here. 
Now, if I wasn't based in Banff, I don't think I would do what I did today. So Banff's only about an hour away, so it's not a big thing, and I have a car. But if I was here on holiday or just for a visit, I definitely want to come and see Moraine Lake. But what I would do is I'd probably jump on one of the tours, one of the buses. So the good thing about that is the buses and the tours can drive straight in even when the road is closed. There's reserved parking for them to pull over. They can drop you right by the viewpoint and then you can come in, have a look, take all your pictures and then jump back on the bus. Some of them go to Lake Louise for a bit, take you for lunches. There's a few different options and I'll, I'll link some of those uh, just down below. That way you just take out all the hassle. It's not like a big mission. You're not gonna be tired for the rest of the day. You don't have to get up at 3 a.m. You're gonna be able to enjoy your day, see the sights and not worry about it. So that's what I would do. Unless I've made this up, I'm pretty sure Parks Canada released a statistic saying something like 95% of tourists don't stray more than a kilometre from their car. So if you want that true Instagram experience and you want a lake to yourself, grab a backpack, grab a tent, get into the backcountry. There are hundreds and thousands of different lakes and photographic opportunities throughout Banff National Park and you'll get loads of them to yourself if you're willing to put in the effort. So if you are able to, I 100% recommend jumping into the backcountry, hiking a few kilometres and seeing what you can find. So, I filmed the rest of that video about two days ago and unfortunately I left my tripod in Moraine Lake uh, when I was filming. So I've come back today to try and get it. Um, unfortunately it wasn't there, but the hassle of getting up the road during the day has really made me think that it is not worth driving a car here if you're on holiday. Um, there's an elaborate kind of one-way system up and down. The road's often closed completely, so you can't even drive up to Moraine Lake. There's traffic jams in the car park if you do get in there. I actually had to beg the Parks Canada guys to let me through the, onto the road this morning, just to let them know I was just driving up to the Moraine Lake Lodge and checking the lost and found for that tripod. But unfortunately, it wasn't there. Um, I'm currently at the Lake Louise Park and Ride. So this is at the Lake Louise Gondola. From here, you can get a bus to Lake Louise and Moraine Lake. It costs about eight bucks, which is pretty good value, and it's just gonna take a lot of the hassle out of the day. Uh, the car park here is pretty full, but it's extensive, it's huge. So lots of space to park your car any time you turn up. Um, jump on that bus and don't worry about the stress of driving. You can also get a bus now from Banff to Lake Louise with Rome as well. It costs a similar price, uh, but you do need to pre-book those tickets in advance to, to get here. So wherever you're staying, you will be able to get to Lake Louise and Moraine Lake without using a car. And that's what I would be doing if I was on holiday. And that way you don't have to get up at 3 a.m., stay in the car park for an hour in the dark, and then be so tired that you leave a $300 tripod behind. In a rather sudden change of events, I just had a call from the visitor center in Lake Louise, and someone's actually handed my tripod in. Someone just called to say, you found my tripod. You think? Um, apparently my tripod's been handed in. Oh, there you go, yeah. Success. Probably still take the bus though, to be honest.